though in England doing some interesting things. This is a Claris Cliff bowl, not a soup bowl, not a cereal bowl, not a dinner bowl. This is a, this is a fruit bowl or a serving bowl. And it is clearly marked Claris Cliff. And uh, I'm not a, an academic in Claris Cliff or a collection. I don't know which range it is. I don't know what age it was. I, I guess it was 30s or 40s as, as, a, as a wild guest. So what I'm talk, going to talk about today is how they made how they made the plate, and I, and I think that this is this is the part of the market which no one knows about, which dictates. Certainly, when it comes to foreign, sorry, Chinese or into pottery, you need to know the difference between a slip cast mould, moulded vase, and a potted vase, and the same applies to this, this Clarice Cliff. It is a manufactured, it is industrially manufactured. It wasn't made by Clarice Cliff. It was designed by Clarice Cliff. It wasn't made by a potter, it was made by a machine with the help of technicians. So what happened here is the factory, let's, let's call it what it is, the Claris Cliff factory will have had a slurry, liquefied pottery. It's not liquefied porcelain in this case, it is liquefied biscuitware, biscuit pottery. And it's an ivory coloured pottery and the mould in the mould, these are not put on by hand like Woodward is. They're not crafted by an artisan, but nothing could be further from the truth. These are made in the mould, plaster mould. And uh, the mould on this occasion had two sides, unlike a teapot where you can't withdraw an interior mould from a teapot because the, the, the hole in the top's too, too narrow. With a teapot, the slurry is allowed to sit inside the void and it sets on the exterior while the middle, full of liquid slurry, it still sits there. So they, they take the clay mould, two halves, make the teapot, fill it with slip and then they tip out the liquid slurry, leaving the inside of a void. And as I say, there's no, there's no inner mould to pull out. Now, this will be made a different way because it's moulded on both sides. So this will be made in a mould with two halves. And what they've done is they've taken the mould, they've poured in the slurry, they've let it set, not going to let it dry, let it set, and then they've taken off the top half. The pottery, liquid pottery, uh, sets because the moisture is drawn into plaster, which sucks the, the, the moisture out really much faster than, than you would imagine and it, and it shrinks as well so the clay literally just drops out it doesn't need to be pulled out with a pin or something and what you have really is is a design I, li I like it very much it, it indicates that it's made by hand it's not made by hand it's made by mold and the same on the back you have this indication it's made by hand like you would on an old Chinese vase but it's not and this Moulding is not applied afterwards or during the middle of the process by a artist or a skilled potter, like a piece of jasperware. This is in the mould, and they make they make the pots as long as the mould is okay. And in the end, the mould wears wears out and throw it away, and they get another one. So it's mass produced. It's very pleasing when the piece of clay comes out of the plaster. They wipe off with a sponge to make it look unglazed here and they dip the whole thing in the glaze they let it dry sorry before they wipe the bottom and then they come to the trim and you have a factory floor with female i'm afraid female workers paintresses and they paint these all day long in the daylight and they use the glazes the colored glazes and remember the colored glazes are not the same colour as you see now, the coloured glazes are different colours before they're fired. So it's quite skilled. In fact, I'd say it's very skilled. I, I think the way it's been done is good. So I like Clara's Cliff, but when you put when you talk about slurry and liquefied clay and presses, the, the glamour perhaps is less exciting. I've noticed also on this, this plate you have some ripply bits where the, the, the mould is not perfect or perhaps the extraction of the wet, semi-wet biscuit pottery has not been done very well. So it's possible that the person lifted it while it was still soft and left impressions in the, in the biscuit pottery. 
So I think that's uh, very nice. I like it very much. They're a lot of money. They're very well collected. It's not the bizarre. The bizarre ones are the ones of the ones. I, I particularly like the Gibraltar Bizarre. There's a Gibraltar Flowers Cliff, which I think is wonderful. Really, really nice. And huge expensive and justifiably so. And of course, the, the, the vases are very expensive. And in, in, in the same way as the Chinese vases, the vases are decorative only. And they accrue higher values because they are these lovely great vases, which, which are usually viewed on profile to the side. I think about a mantelpiece or table, a table top. When it comes to domestic Clarice Cliff, domestic Chinese pottery, you'll notice the teapots, the cups and saucers, the plates are less money because they're deemed household items and they weren't necessarily made to look at. They were made to, to use. It's not only, only a matter of there being more of them. So plates, you're, you know, you're limited in your display. People put them on walls, they, they use hangers, they use all sorts of devices, they use plates. And I don't think it's satisfying. I, I quite like a plate on, on, a, on a table like that. I think they look better than anything else. So anyway, we had a chat about Clarice Cliff. We've had a chat about how they're made. And it is the difference between hand potting and the difference between slip casting. And that's quite an important thing. Thank you.